Hey, good morning. This is David Russell with Alabama Extension, and we're coming to you from the field on Sand Mountain this morning. And we we're supposed to have a field day showcasing some forage plots where we applied herbicide in the fall to try to treat some uh, cool season annuals. So we'll do our best because of the restrictions to show you what we've got in the field now and how it looks. Um, some questions that I get this time of year are how to control uh, broadleaf weeds as well as annual grasses while we're still in the cool season as our forage, our warm season forage emerges. And um, as far as herbicides, our options become limited as our warm season forages begin to emerge. In this case, we're standing in a Bermuda grass hay field, but you really can't tell it because of the amount of volunteer annual ryegrass that's surrounding these demonstration plots. So as you can see, this is a volunteer stand uh, that we're standing in of uh, a mixed stand of annual broadleaves as well as volunteer annual ryegrass. And as you know, a lot of these germinate in the fall of the year, the October, November timeframe. And so the best time to control these specific weeds are through pre-emergence options. Uh, and those are best applied before, obviously, germination, which in this case, all these plots were put out in mid-September before germination. In a lot of cases, it's still really hot. In fact, when we put these out, it was 91 degrees in mid-September. There was still a pretty good amount of coverage from Bermuda grass and crabgrass in this field. And the producer had just removed his last cutting of hay off this field. And so you'll see this is left unchecked and you know if you want to come in and control this our herbicide options are limited so we're showcasing a product that is set to come to the market this year for forages this is in Dazaflam. it will be the proposed trade name Resolon. and in these demonstration plots we put out a three ounce and a five ounce rate both in mid September so this is a fall application and you can see we're in mid-April now, and you can see how clean these plots are from our cool season annual control. And also you can see the amount of Bermuda grass that is beginning to spread across these plots. You can see the amount of Bermuda grass that's starting to spread. And obviously without weed competition in a program like this, he's gonna get a quicker emergence of Bermuda grass as the soil temperatures increase which means a quicker and earlier hay cutting. Um, this again was a single three ounce application applied in the fall. As we move to our right into the next plot, this was a five ounce rate applied in mid-September. And from a weed control standpoint, at this, this time, we really can't see a difference between the two. I think the biggest difference between these two are gonna be the, the longevity in weed control. In other words, how far into the spring and summer seasons will we continue to get control? And as a pre-emergence application, we're talking about, again, not controlling what's already there, but preventing seed that is yet to emerge. And so as we uh, get on into the, the summer months, we're, we're, hope, we're hoping that this application will continue to provide control for warm season species like crabgrass and some of our annual foxtail species. The plot we're standing in now is a scenario where we've applied three ounces in the fall mid-September after the last hay cutting as well as three ounces this spring. We put it out a month ago in mid-March. In the spring application we included about a quart of Roundup. And we did that because we knew that we'd probably have a flush of weed species mixture that's in here that will compete with uh, the emerging Bermuda grass. And so we wanted to clean that up. We also included Roundup because we knew Bermuda grass in this part of the state was still truly dormant. And I don't advise anyone putting out Roundup uh, when Bermuda grass or any other warm season mixed grass is actively growing because you're gonna it's going to result in some pretty uh, 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 heavily injured stands so but in this case uh, it's a three ounce in the fall three ounce in the spring and so it cleaned it up pretty well with a spring application we'll uh, obviously get better control into the summer months 
We're also going to compare that to the five ounce rate uh, this spring. Like I said, from a weed control perspective at this point, you know, not much difference between the two, but I think as we move into the growing season, we will uh, start to see uh, how long they will uh, last. Now, currently, there's only really one free emergence options that we can apply in established warm season grasses, and that's prowl. Uh, prowl compared to this, I think is a little more um, specific as far as our application timing. Prowl requires uh, rainfall incorporation pretty quickly after ap our herbicide application. In other words, we want to get that herbicide moved into that soil profile to prevent weed seed germination. This, uh, this product laid on the field probably uh, two or three weeks before we received a good incorporating rainfall. And so just comparing the two, with this one we get a little more leniency as far as our application timing in that after our last hay cutting in the fall, if we want to uh, control any of our cool season annuals that are set to emerge, we've got a window there that we can apply and wait on rainfall to incorporate. We do have some grasses that slip through here and I will say that they don't have much of a root system at this point. If we were to find any annual rye grasses that have slipped through this, you can pull them up uh, pretty much with one hand and you can see they've got club roots or or no roots at all. And so what, what has happened here is after the herbicide has been applied, um, this annual ryegrass has germinated in the crop residue or the thatch layer uh, above the soil surface. And so we've gotten so much moisture up here this late winter and early spring that it's still, and other grasses like this, like little barley and uh, Carolina foxtail that's germinating uh, in the fall of the year, they can still do fairly well in that thatch layer above the soil surface as long as we've got moisture. So I think as we move into the summer months and this begins to dry out, all these that have germinated in that thatch layer will eventually die because they can't send a tap root down into that soil profile.